Hey everybody, welcome back to Northern Lion Plays of Binding of Isaac Adder for the Plus. I started today at a five win streak. It feels wrong to end it at anything but a five win streak. I mean, ten would be better, <laughs> to be fair. Uh, FMVG KDY1. There's a joke in there about the NBA All Star game, but I don't know enough about basketball to make it. What I was gonna say. Way! Easy on the freaking spiders there, dude. I'm trying not to lose my deal with the devil precedent out here on uh, my second XL run in a row. The second beginning XL run in a row. Anyway, um. You know, I probably was in the market to record a few less Isaac episodes today, but, um, oh, we'll suck that up. That's a Tears upgrade out of a Samson's Chains that would have cost us. There is a heart, I think, that dropped. Oh, a pill. All right. Um, but in a weird way, I don't want to say it's a blessing in disguise, but losing in, in a hilarious way... On that very first run, before we, I mean, pulled out the W in the end. It makes me want to finish today, like, in a position that's a little bit, you know, it's like where we started today at. The, we want to get back to that point, I guess, before we let the day slip by. Probably we'll suck up camo undies as well. So I guess they're <laughs> edible, honey, <laughs> edible undies. <laughs> uh, anyway. What do you got for me? Ooh, damage and luck. I can live with that. Do want to have a void ready though for our boss fight. Just think. All right. Well, that's gonna be ah, easy enough to accomplish. Where was I going with this? Well, I guess what I should say, dude. That's so extremely great on this floor. We've turned a, a lot of nothing into a little bit of something. Um, it, obviously, you know, if you go into an episode with a 50 streak and you lose, uh, it's not really realistic to be at 50 wins uh, by the end of that day. Is it possible to win 50 Isaac runs in a single day? I'm going to take the under on that one. I don't think it's possible. Uh, well, it depends on the conditions, okay? Could you... Uh, if we set the terms as, you know... Go to the chest or the dark room. Oh, one moment. I've received a text message. In the mid, it, it's Don King. He wants to, it's Dana White. They want to promote the Isaac thing I just came up with. It's a text message. My mom trying to schedule a phone call. I'm just going to pass her through to my personal assistant. That's a joke. I'm my own personal assistant. Um,. Uh, what was I gonna say? So if you you have to you can't just you know cheap out and be like I beat mom it's over oh my god I got hit by pin send me Sam Raimi style straight to heck let's try paperclip I didn't want your stinky deal with the devil anyway that we still have a one third chance of getting roughly um. I'm really, if, if you go all the way to the chest, I think you might be able to fit in 50 Azazel runs in a single day if you played for 24 hours and won. You'd have to win pretty much every single run. You'd also love to have some runs that were like 10 minutes long to buy you some time. You know, some runs where maybe you just get a staggering amount of HP very early on, and then you can use the, uh... The tower. Not the tower. Uh, then you can use the, uh, like a self-sacrifice room to take you all the way to the end. But I don't know. You might be like, NL, why don't you try? Nah. It's not that I'm old. It's that I have self-respect. Legitimately. I, I don't... You ever... I, I preach this a lot. I, I preach consistency, if anything. Reliability. Your boy's always there. He's got three new videos a day on YouTube. Maybe more, but very, very, very rarely, yes. I mean, I, there are probably other YouTubers in this in a similar vein. I know there's, like, um, Ko, you know, one of uh, Justin and Austin uh, Dick Hammer's friends on, on Twitch. It's not that we're not friends. It's just we've never spoken. He's literally streamed for something like... 900, and I'm being sincere, 900 days in a row. 
If you'll forgive me, I'm actually not going to re-roll this run. I've had a fun time on this run so far. Void's been amazing. I don't want to compromise that by... And we've, we've used the D-Infinity a lot recently, so... Or at least a, a bit recently. Um, and that's in, insane, you know? He, he streamed on the day of his child's birth. Uh, only for like 10 minutes or something like that. But simultaneously, uh, who am I to judge? When was the last time I missed an Isaac upload? I'm gonna be honest with you, I think it was the year 2012. <laughs> it's like seven years of not missing a day. That's absurd. That's crazy. So I, I'm, I'm not in a position to judge. Um, but you know why I've never missed a day or have not in a, in seven years missed a day of Isaac? Um, because I, I base my whole work around consistency and part of that is not doing weirdo marathon streams that are are probably bad for me like there's a prominent streamer made a tweet that was like please god let 24 hour streams die they're like a vestige of old twitch culture now i don't agree with this streamer on every issue for sure but i agree with him on this one you know marathon streams i kate's done a few i just find them I, the idea of doing a marathon stream is like the idea of me having like midweek surgery or something like that. Like a 24 hour stream is is a weak destroyer in many ways. And I, I'm just saying, you know, I don't want to do that anymore. Not that I ever did in the first place. I mean, we did the 52 hour stream. I was mistreating my body in a, in a egregious manner that weekend. I don't want to go back to that, you know? I also feel like the stream quality on like a 24 hour stream is not particularly good. Like the first few hours you're like, alright this is cool, and then the last 20 hours is just like, I don't know, it's an anxiety attack waiting to happen. It's a thousand people watching you suffer. <laughs> and then laughing about it. Hey, you tired bro? Bro, you tired? Egg, egg, you t wake up egg! You know, it's just a nightmare for me. But I kind of agree. I'm not saying Twitch should take steps against it or anything like that, but... I'm, I'm not an endurance streamer. I'm, I, you know, I'm, I'm in a weird position. I'm a sprinter. You know, my streams are relatively short, but I do them almost every day at this point. Plus the YouTube stuff. It's a, it's a whole thing. Now, I screwed up my deal with the devil chance yet again. Oh, that's, I actually, for about a half second, and if my face was up on the camera, you would have seen it. Uh, I legitimately thought that the sound that you're hearing was the start of an earthquake. It is not. Instead, it's just a carbon monoxide leak. No, it's, uh, my wife's taking a shower. Not, don't be weird about it, you sickos. This is what happens when you live in a domicile with one bathroom. My office happens to be right next to the bathroom. We get the sound of the water coming through the pipes. Y'all know how your boy do. He let it lick the rapper. You should have come slightly further and been hit by my bomb. Maybe a little selfish for me to suggest, but come on. Deal with the devil? Did not beat the odds. Give me that. I want stats. Finally, we have a spirit art we can use to protect our deal with the devil interest, by the way. Yeah, I just, uh, I don't know. It's, it's a diff it is a different era to some extent. I don't think it's a, a sign that the times have gotten worse, by the way, that uh, marathon streaming is kind of, I don't want to say it's become a little unfavorable, but I don't know. It's just not for me, you know, especially I've been in this a, a long time. You know, the fact that it, it's funny to suggest, you know, maybe it's been seven years since I, I missed an Isaac upload. Okay. I mean, that's obviously a long time. That was also uh, a year and a half after I started uploading Isaac. So, you know, your boy's been around the block and all that. Um, but, I was, you know, I've seen streamers come and go. There's a, there's a sustainability issue sometimes. You know, I think anything that allows you to be comfortable doing your job for as long as possible is, the, is wise. You know, it's like when you're running, once you become a, even a semi-serious runner... I'm not talking about going pro, I just mean like somebody who's like, I run! You know, the first piece of advice people will give you, and I'll echo it, is, uh, you know, for maximum comfort, you know, do you get shin splints, tight hamstrings, chafing, etc, etc? Go buy whatever you need to buy 
in order to make running comfortable. It's going to make your life ten times easier. You're going to be a better runner just because you're going to be happier to be doing it, you know? Buy uh, whatever the heck the... I forgot what the anti... I, I used to have a gel. No joke. This is getting a little bit TMI, but it's also like, hey, we all got bodies, right? I used to have like a... Basically like a runner's lubricant that I would apply to my chest and legs before I ran. Otherwise, I'd come home with a bloody shirt. And I was always supposed to blow the bloody doors off. Um, and same thing for shoes. Like when I used to run, you know, uh, like the first month or so I ran, I was always on the internet like, you know, hey, why do I have shin splints? People are like, uh, what are you running in? And I'm like, my, my dress shoes, something like that. And they're like, you should really go get fitted for like, you know, have someone do like a gait analysis at a running store and then recommend the shoe based on your on your gait and your, you know, the, the way that you run. And I was like, how much of a difference could it make? And then I was like, 80 bucks for a running shoe, that's crazy. And then I ran for the first time on the shoe and I was like, I don't hurt anymore as badly. You still hurt a little bit, but that's like the, you know, that's the point, I guess, to some extent. I kind of feel that way about streaming as well. Like, if the streaming is uh, pleasant to you, you're going to do it more often, you're going to have more fun doing it, and that'll be a little infectious. If you pride yourself on doing these streams that are like, every stream I shove a, a bamboo shoot up my urethra for each new subscriber. I'm like, dude, you are setting yourself. I don't know, maybe you got maybe you got that Chris Pontius blood. I don't. But I think you're setting yourself up for disaster. This run is starting to freak me out a little bit. 100% chance of a deal with the devil, don't get me wrong, I'm excited about that. Uh, and I, statistically, you know, 8 rate of fire, 6 damage is not bad. I think we, uh, it would be fair to suggest we have room to grow there. We have not picked up many items, we picked up a lot of stats. We've only had 3 items, 2 of which are stats, 1 of which uh, gives us a trinket and a passive effect and the trinket we're not even using anymore. So this would be a really nice floor for things to come around. Really bring us back to a, a good level of baseline and growth here, I hope. We got enough money for the shop. We got enough keys for the item room, obviously. All right, feeling a little bit better. Anyway. Where am I going with this? I don't know. I, I'm i not going to try to win 50 times in 20. Because it just sounds... It, it, it sounds unpleasant. <laughs> and it, if it's, it's kind of like the 50 nugget challenge, you know? In the end, it's going to sound very self-serving. But the 50 nugget challenge, it wasn't like POW torture. But it was unpleasant and in the end it led to some great entertainment for the viewers but i'm not a hundred percent that was just a terrible dodge by the way i'm not a hundred percent down for always sacrificing my own health mental and physical for the for the sake of the viewers that's not what this <sighs> i'm bad because i'm bad i'm bad need six spirit hearts to get the deal with it i'm bad so bad he's really really bad 1% chance, come on. Well, it was worth a shot. I would rather have it be a collaborative experience where, you know, we in chat, we have fun with each other. That's why I was hesitant to do the 50 Nug Challenge in the first place. Is I, I felt like I was kind of the voice of reasoning, and I don't want to point fingers, but a lot of people who were eager for the 50 Nug Challenge didn't eat 50 Nuggets, whereas I did, and I expressed a lot of reservation about it. Because in the end, I gain no pride in knowing I was able to eat 51 or 52 McDonald's chicken nuggets in a single sitting. That, it, it, it brings me no satisfaction. I already know I'm gluttonous. I can eat more than I should. It's, it's a habit I practice on at least a, you know, a twice weekly basis. But it was entertaining for the audience. And that's enough, but it's also enough, if you know what I mean. Like occasionally people will be like, Hey, are you ever going to try to beat, you know, Rob or Corey's or Bear Taffy's record of uh, 60 chicken nuggets, uh, 69 chicken nuggets? Uh, no. Absolutely not. I leave that to the generation coming up behind me, you know? If you guys want to do that, by all means. Ah! Okay, now I'm genuinely concerned we could die. 
This shop is a real important one. I still don't think we will, but I think we could. Important, um, important. I don't really care about the glowing hourglass, to be honest. Let's let's try this deal with the devil, the riffraff, one more time. Again, I feel the need to point out. It's not like there's a little voice in my head that goes like, "Hey, you're 30. Don't eat 60 chicken nuggets." It's more like I am the voice. You know, and I'm like, I don't want to eat 60 chicken nuggets. There was probably a time when I was like 20 where I'd be like, oh boy, we're getting up to some real shenanigans. We're doing stuff that we don't, we really shouldn't be doing. But in my the back of my head, I'd be like, bro, I'm going to enjoy at least like 35 of these chicken nuggets. Now my body is like, I don't want to do that. And that's a good thing. <laughs> I think it's a good thing at least. I feel like it's a good thing. Here's a challenge for you. How many days in a row can you get at least seven hours of sleep, take your multivitamin, and uh, stick with your workout routine? Boo! Hiss! He's giving us uh, wisdom we already know, but only choose to follow on specific situations and is being a hypocrite because he himself does, you know, not always do that. But anyway, that's that's more the life I'm interested in. That's my 2019 life. I don't know, in 2020, maybe it'll... Maybe we'll get into some real disastrous stuff. Who knows? Probably not. Seems unlikely. Speaking of which, I didn't talk about this, but on the flight back, uh, and I, I've talked about the show in the past, but I didn't talk about a specific anecdote. But uh, on the flight back, I watched a bunch of Intervention on the, on the plane. Intervention is a show where they basically trick uh, drug addicts into being like, hey, we're doing a documentary about, like, what, what's life like when you're addicted to heroin? And then actually what it is, is an opportunity to get a picture of their life um, while being addicted to drugs. But then the whole premise of the show is that their family is like, hey, you're, you're dying, please go get rehab. You know, they do an intervention, which is like a family meeting, basically, family and friends. Um, and it's weird, because I think it's, it's almost too easy to say that the show is exploitative, because it is. I'll, I'll level with you. The reason I watch the show is not for the uplifting moment where they go like, yes, I'll go to treatment. It's a little bit, I don't want to say schadenfreude. I'm not, I don't watch the show to mock, by the way. But I do watch the show to be like, almost an inoculation against any sort of drug-based temptation where I'm like, man, these people were like, my life was good. And then like one day I, you know, just got addicted to heroin, and here we are. But a lot of they do like interviews after the show, and not with people who were on the show like six months ago, with people who were on the show like a decade ago, because um, it's been running that long. <sighs> I don't really want to suck it up, and I don't really want to get rid of the void. Same, but that's another dicey one. That's a good item. That's not really. Also, not really. It's close, but I'm going a little deeper, I think. Might as well pick it up. This Necropolis one, okay. It's about to break, I'm sure. You know, suck it up. Tears upgrade. Um, beautiful. I'm gonna, I'm gonna Joker card immediately. Joker. Something I'm sure is gonna be very unpopular, but um, I want to hold the blank rune. Anyway. Uh, they do these interviews with people who were on Intervention like 10 years ago um, and are like, the show showed me at my worst, my worst for other people's entertainment, but it also saved my life. So I almost, forgive me, I feel like it's a little bit too easy to just be like, the show's exploitative. It's exploitative and it's also helpful, I think. What bothers me about Intervention is that I really do not understand how they keep tricking people into being on Intervention. Literally 100% of the time. They get, you know, because they kind of, they do trick them. They they call, they're like, hey, Alicia, you know, uh, why don't you come meet us over here? We got a problem. And then Alicia comes to meet them, and there's a dude with a skullet and a mustache that's like, hey, Alicia. They got us. They got us. Uh, we're here because we're worried about you. And she's like, oh, no. It's intervention, isn't it? And I'm just like, of course it's intervention. How... When Intervention first came on the air, you could be forgiven for being like, oh, they just want to do a documentary about crystal meth. Some of the people that are on Intervention were like nine when Intervention started airing. The show's been on forever. 
How is it possible whenever something egregious happens in public, literally 100% of people are like, Am I on candid camera right now? Am I on punked? I guess, uh, you know, I'm, I'm just saying. The only documentary, there's two documentaries, I guess, about drug use. One is Drugs, Inc., where everybody uses a voice changer and goes, you know, they, they talk about selling drugs in the city. The other one is Intervention. You should know which one you're on based on whether they're having you sit in a studio, like with a green screen behind you, or whether they're, they say, hey, put on this bandana and we'll use a voice changer as well. Anyway. Intervention. I'll stand by it. There's a lot of television programs. I watch I watch some of these programs for Shadden for you, okay? I will admit. And I maybe this makes me a bad person to some extent, but I really think that the reason most people watch them is for Shadden Freud. Like all those TLC shows about like the dude who wants to marry his car. You have to be like I'm a little woke. You got to be like 10 times more woke than me to watch that and be like, hey, don't laugh at him kissing his car. Don't laugh at that girl eating styrofoam. I Well, why are you watching it? I'm watching it for the uplifting part where they talk to a doctor and the doctor tells them if they keep drinking gasoline, they're gonna die and then they consider changing their life. No, you're not. Deep inside of your brain, you got the same voice everybody else watching the show does that goes, whoa, <laughs> my life might be a little bit messed up, but it's not, at least I'm not eating batteries, you know? And then there's maybe a little bit. It's not like when I watch the show, I go like, yeah, ignore the doctor's advice. Keep eating the mattress, honey. I'm like, you know, stop eating the mattress, but simultaneously like, whoa, what are you doing? And I, it's the same like, I've, I've said it on myriad occasion in the past. It's the same with hoarders. On hoarders, I want the people to get better. But I'm not watching Hoarders for the six months after the fact where they're like, look at a picture of a clean kitchen. I can already see that by looking to my left. Not that I'm bragging, but you know. The reason I watch it is because I go like, whoa. My dude's saving old potato chip wrappers. And then when people try to throw them out, he's going, they might be important someday. It's kind of like, it's, it's just a fascinating story. I know it's mental illness, but you know what? So is the dude who wants to marry his car. Is it okay to make fun of that? I feel like we as a society kind of, via our actions, kind of agreed, like, it's okay to laugh a little bit at the guy who wants to marry his car. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I've misread the situation greatly. And this is a career-destroying move. I, if, if that's the case, I apologize. Times were different then, blah, blah, blah. Are we good? <laughs> Wait, there's another demon heart back there. But you know what? It's, it requires a great social barometer to know what's okay to laugh at and what's not okay to laugh at. I feel like the dude might as well suck it up. Uh, we sucked up Gigafart, I think, there. Um, the dude who married his car and has an intimate relationship with it Hold on, what's going on with the braille here? Is that a map of the floor? Is it a new ARG? I'm freaking out, dude. Um, I think we all agreed that it's kind of okay to laugh at. Or at least to find it humorous. You're not watching it going, <laughs> like that makes you kind of a terrible person. Um, me. But, you know, some of the shows are a little different. Is it okay to, to laugh at Hoarders? I don't know. Maybe yes, maybe no. It is a legitimate melt mental illness. It's destroying people's lives. But so is the dude who wants to marry his car. You think it's not having an impact on that man's social life? For a couple of reasons. One is he can't take her anywhere. The other one... Uh, I don't even know if I should have said that. Maybe we're at the point where we're like... Don't make fun of that, dude. But I, I hope that he would have a sense of humor about it as well. I got weirdness. One of my friends who's probably watching this video texted me. I was like, hey, we're friends. You want to get lunch tomorrow? And I texted him back. And I was like, sorry, dude. I need to not see human beings for a while. That's not a rational approach, you know, I think. I can make fun of myself for that. 
Book of the Dead. I mean, we'll just suck it up, but... Close to Bookworm, too. I can make fun of my own foibles. Now, I don't want to marry my own car. Maybe that's just because my car kind of sucks. All offense meant and intended Ford Motor Corporation of Canada. Um, pop out. Pop out. I, I freaking dare you. I absolutely dare you. Hoarders seems way less okay to make fun of. Intervention seems, you know, there's some stuff on that show. I wouldn't even say you watch it out of a sense of, of like, this is funny. Like, hey, look at how addicted to drugs they are. It's not like that. It's more like you watch it and you go like, it's just interesting. You're like, wow, I never would have considered the, you know, how, how much these destroy your life. It's just kind of, it's entertaining, not in a humorous way. Same thing, I'll, I'll just tell you, with my 600-pound life. That's a show that runs the gamut of all emotions. There's uh, moments where you're aghast. There's moments where you're in tears. There's moments where you're, uh, you know, you, the stuff that you're seeing on screen is unbelievable. Like, there's some stuff in that show, and I apologize if the way this makes me seem is, is callous, but they'll be like, I, my life is being destroyed, and I, like, I can't be active as a parent, I can't do anything with my kids, my kids ask why I'm sick all the time, blah, 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 and it brings a tear to your eye. And then in the next scene, they show, you know, the subject of the documentary outside, like, bathing in a trough meant for animals and you're like TLC what are you doing <laughs> I don't understand where what kind of tone you're trying to strike here you know because it's I, I, I you should uh, maybe be treating the subjects with some dignity I guess not being like hey can we can we videotape you bathing it's weird it's there's a whole there's a genre of television that is like you know it's shame watching but I don't think that makes you a bad person Intervention is genuinely, it's two different things. It's like a cautionary tale and it's uplifting. I'm not saying that just because you watch Intervention, like you're never going to get sucked into the world of narcotics use. Because like a lot of the people, well, some of the people on Intervention are like, I was a normal 25 year old and then I got in a car accident. I had uh, opiate painkillers. My doctor stopped prescribing them and then, you know, I still had the symptoms So, you know, one of my friends was like, hey, you know what? There's this thing out there that does something similar for you and they, Before you know it, you know, your life's your life's on a bad path But I do think that instead of doing, you know, dare programs in high school, you know, like drug awareness programs when we had those in Canada as well, by the way, they should just make you watch like an episode of Intervention a week. Because that'll, it'll remove any glamour that you have about that side of the society real quickly. Especially, there's n half of those episodes end so tragically. Where it'll be like, you know, they, the family reads these letters that they pour their heart and soul into about how like, basically the son that they birthed is now lost to them and blah 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 and the guy's like okay i'll go get treatment and then two months later they interview him in rehab and he's like i'm loving life every day is a gift and then they do a little post-mortem and they're like after he got out of rehab he started using heroin again you know if that's not a cautionary tale i don't know what is of the power of you know uh like biological and physical addiction you know what we did in our uh school we did a, a program called race against drugs where a cop came in and basically i don't want to burst your bubble this cop lied to us i've told the story before as i as i preface this with every time i've told the story before but a, a police officer came in once a week and was like basically told us like hey if you take pcp the cops will have to shoot you 40 times to kill you it makes you into a superhero. And everyone was like, whoa. And they're like, no, 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 not like that. And then the other, like, one-third of the time, we we did, like, slot car races. You know, like, uh, matchbox cars and Hot Wheels and stuff like that. I have no idea. I, I guarantee it was thought up by, like, a, a baby boomer that was like, well, we can't get a, a compelling anti-drug message. What do kids like? Slot cars! Slot cars and... Uh... What's, what's the other word I'm looking for? Like, um... What's a der... It's a slot car derby, right? Anyway, I'm... I ruined my own joke, but... It was weird, because even as, like, sixth graders, we were like... 
Okay, so we go into like, we, they'd have these like, symposiums basically. Where you go in, and like one tent, you never knew what you were getting into until you got there. One tent would be like, Hey kids, this is what heroin looks like. So if you ever see this, like run in the other direction. And then the other tent is like, all right, we're gonna play bumper cars. Who want? It's just a really weird way to like surrogate that information. Speed upgrade, huh? Oh, yo, that's not so bad though. It was just strange. So I, I feel like intervention is actually like a great educational program, and I'm not being insincere when I say that. It's amazing, especially like. You know, the, the episodes that are about illicit narcotics are like... This is going to come across as like a Prohibition era argument. And I don't mean it like that. But, you know, it, a lot of people will snidely be like, you know, well, if they didn't want to get addicted to crystal meth, they shouldn't have taken crystal meth. There's a, an argument you cannot argue with. Obviously, that that's sound, you know? But, you know, after it happens, what are you supposed to do? You know, just abandon them and be like, well, you made one mistake. I don't know. Maybe that's some ways some people's way of dealing with it but the episodes of intervention that are more interesting for me are the people that are like i have like a normal life but i drink like you know two-fifths of whiskey a day and i'm like man you can just like go into a store and buy that that's a little bit more i don't want to say unsettling but i'm like there's not that much difference from the <laughs> the last episode that was on about the person that was addicted to heroin versus this person. The only difference is that one of the people had to go into the... Well, there's a couple of differences, I guess, on a more epidemiological scale. I'm being a little ignorant. I think we would all agree with that, as usual. But one, they're like, hello, Janet. And the other one, they're like, you know, I'm meeting my friend Ahab. <laughs> and no, you can't film this. The other one is like they walk into a store and they go, Hey, welcome! Bing bong! Can I help you find anything today? There's other differences. I wouldn't I wouldn't say that I'm not taking the galaxy brain opinion that's actually like, hmm. What is <laughs> that that drill tweet that's like uh, actually there's no difference between either side, you absolute idiot. I'm just saying. We should win this run. I haven't talked about Isaac in a little while here. I just, I always feel the need to go off on a rant justifying the fact that I enjoy the television program intervention every time I bring it up. Because otherwise there's a little bit of like, you're watching that to, you know, be entertained by the misery of other people. And I'm like, yeah, bud. <laughs> it's an improv bit. Yo, I need this. I need this like water, like breath, like I actually don't think we need a luck upgrade. I think I will. In st static tiers, by the way, were amazing here. But I think in general, I would probably suck up the other items and hope for better statistical improvements. And we're also hoping for some serious uh, chest action here because we have eight luck. Uh, we got extra luck anyway, but then we got shot speed and range, which is not what we were looking for. Anyway, in general, like, whatever you want to watch, I don't really care. I just, I need, I feel the need to defend myself. I don't watch Intervention and go like, wow, wow, these drug addicts, have they ever considered just like, mm, not using the drug? I watch it and I go, whoa, dude. Like, I can't even fathom the, you know, the, the pull of that kind of like biological addiction, I guess. Or, I shouldn't even say biological addiction, because I don't know if it needs to be clarified like that. Just addiction in general. It's a very powerful show about, you know, like, how even normal people can find themselves under the pull of something like this. And it makes you feel weird when you have a headache and you're like, I'm going to take two Advil. This is a two Advil sort of headache. Not really. I'm just looking for conversation to get me out of this murky... <laughs> This murky area. First, he uh, made fun of the Irish for drinking Molson Canadian. Then he said, is he going to have to chuggy-o? 
Now he's making fun of drug addicts. No, that's not the case, okay? I will say I'll make fun of the dude who married his own car. And that's that's not because he's a dude. I will also make fun of the lady who uh, wants to have intercourse with a roller coaster. And I make fun of myself. I don't have anything on that level, I think. But the stuff about me that's a little bit weird. I'll, I'll make fun of that as well. I just don't want to be seen as like, uh, you know, can dish it out but can't take it. I would like to think that if I also wanted to marry a roller coaster, I would be able to have a sense of humor about it. I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. Try having a sense of humor in general first. I've been working on that for years. Haven't really reached that goal yet, but... No, thank you. We got real lucky. This was a run that was actually basically built to do well on the chest. You know, nine luck, obviously. Void turning our trash items, of which there are many, into stuff that's a little bit more reasonable for us. You know, this is uh, a little bit more useful, at least. This is a dream come true. So, I mean, not to mention we have the Cancer Trinket, which basically exists because Gulp allowed us to also, uh, you know, essentially smelt some of the earlier trinkets we had that were also very good. Mmm, I would rather smelt that. Mm, don't you wish your trinket was smelt like thee? That's not very good. That's a... That's the kind of joke that makes you feel bad for leaving off the day's recording session on something so, so terrible. I have more airport bits, but there's no time to get into them. Um, like, for example, how I was in the airport convenience store, and uh, there's a, I found a new least favorite genre of music, which is good music that's a little, like, lo-fi or edgy or hard to listen to being remade with like all the edges sanded off so it's actually palatable for an audience. Like when we were in the Vancouver Airport convenience store, there was a cover version of Jesus and Mary Chains uh, just like Honey playing. Why, why, why not play the original? But this one's just better. It's got cleaner production. You can actually like hear the words more clearly. Plus the guy's Scottish accent. We've just replaced that with like a breathy American accent. So it's just an improvement in all ways. Uh, hey, thanks for watching. I hope you guys have enjoyed the episode. If you did, click the like button. It helps out a great deal. Of course, subscribe if you want to see more in the future. For now, thanks for watching, and I will see you next time. See you.